overmorgen valt de uitspraak in het proces tegen de Scientology Kerk hier in België. Het heeft meer dan vier maanden geduurd en met het onderzoek is het gerecht zelfs bijna twintig jaar bezig geweest. In Brussel is een proces begonnen tegen Scientology. Het federaal parket ziet de beweging als een criminele organisatie die zich schuldig maakte aan verschillende misdrijven. Het onderzoek naar Scientology België begon al in 1997. Het federaal parket ziet Scientology als een criminele organisatie die haar leden oplicht en afperst. Voorts wordt de beweging er ook van verdacht dat ze de privacy van de mensen schendt en onwettige geneeskunde beoefent. Scientology wil al die aantijgingen weerleggen. John, we invited you because you have been a member for 21 yes. years. You're here now to attend the trial, the verdict. Yeah. What, why is that so important for you? Well, um, for one thing, I'm sitting there in the courthouse looking at former colleagues of mine, people I worked with, you know, also here in Brussels many years ago, you know. Um, but being aware of how terribly, I suppose, crooked this organization is. It's a bit like, you know, if you take Scientology in trial, it's like a tennis match between Tintin and Blofeld with Seth Blatter as the referee. You know, this is a That's thing. That's why quite a comparison. It is. I mean, yeah, but, but, but I've seen a lot of these trials. Um, uh, crooked, I, you, you say. Is that how, crooked, how crooked. you would describe Scientology after 20, 21 years? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it is a corrupt corrupting organization. And what do you mean by that? Because the accusations now in, in the court are uh, blackmail, money laundry, illegal practice of medicine. Is right. that exactly what it was for oh, you? Completely. Uh, I, mean, I mean, completely. And for you I mean, personally, yeah. I, I mean, um, one, of my, one of my colleagues used to collect the, the, the cash into suitcases and fly over to the Caymans and deposit it there. Um, the reason they've got a, uh, a cruise ship based in the Netherlands Antilles is because they have a bank that looks after all the tax-free cash that they run through their banks, you know, that kind of thing. Have you done things yourself that you would consider now as illegal? Oh, I've done horrific <laughs> things and I... Um, like what? Well, um, I've helped kidnap people back who've been trying to get out of Scientology. I've been literally kidnapping, you know, been involved in that kind of thing. You actually... Physically, yeah, yeah I mean, people will be trying to escape, you know. Uh, it's very difficult to get out of the cult if you're in the paramilitary level, which I was in the, the, the C organization, it's called. It is difficult to get out, mm -hmm. mentally as well as physically. But sometimes people would make it and they get to an airport and then I was part of the alert team and would rush down there in cars and then stand by the departure gates as soon as the person goes through, grab him and hustle him back to the cars and... And you never had any -educate him. problems with that? Well, obviously, you know, if you are completely indoctrinated into a given thought mode, you know, it could be a Marxist fanatical group, it could be Islamic Jihad or something like that, you know, uh, I'm sure if you're able to take one of the, you know, uh, uh, an ISIS militant who's, you know, sort of killing and raping, and if you could get him out and re-educate him, he would look back with horror, you know, at, oh, my God, I killed a kid because he was a Christian kid, you know what I mean? But, but at the time, at the time, you believe this, you believe it's the right thing. This is your focus and your mission and... And you were, I may say, vulnerable as a, as a kid? Cause you, terribly. You had two parents who killed themselves? Yeah. Um, and the, uh, was that I mean, the reason uh, they got you into their network? I was certainly set up, badly set up, if you like, in my, in my childhood. I mean, I think my, my, my parents were not the most stable people anyway, so even that alone, even with them there, and then, of course, them dying and then being uprooted to a new country with new people and new families and all that, leaves a bit of a hole, a psychological <laughs> hole in your, in your, in your makeup. If, if I may ask, because you escaped, in, if, escaped, if I may say so. It is, it in, is escaped, yeah. In 2006, after 21 years, what made that you were able, strong enough, that you were strong enough to get out? Well, um, you know, <clears throat> you can never <clears throat> underestimate the importance of the 
influence of certain teachers at certain points in your life, right? And there was two or three people um, who I knew as a young as a young man, a young before I ever got involved in the cults, who, you know, were um, secular humanists. Um, who were friends of, you know, my families, my, my new families in Ireland, very wise, intelligent people. And they left certain thoughts with me, if you like. During 21 years. Then. And those thoughts stayed there. Uh, 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 and at certain points, part of the in an indoctrination would come and say that anybody who is on this side is evil and crazy and degraded, to use some of their terms, right? And somehow this little thing would hit in my head. Hang on, my friend Michael, he's an amazing, brilliant man. But, well, you know, maybe Hubbard is right. But these things stay in your head. And so you decide to get out. That might be a tricky thing, because we have some footage of uh, someone else who, who escaped Scientology. That's right. And you encountered some people of the Scientology church yeah. then at the airport in Los Angeles. Yeah. And that is quite a impressive footage. We're going to take a look at that. Go live a life. Why don't you get a life, man? Just get a life. You've had zero effect, none, and nobody gives a fuck about you. That's the truth. Nobody right. has even noticed you're gone, man. Nobody. It, you're nothing. That's broke. the point. And you're it, nothing. No it's embarrassing. Why don't you do something with your life? You're an embarrassment. An embarrassment to the fact that you were ever, ever connected to us. Can you, people, can you people move on, please? <laughs> Mark, did that happen to you? Um, this, what you see there is quite typical behaviour. Um, humanity, the person's humanity is not really recognised. People are, people are recognised as a product, what you can do with a person. Now, that was Jenny DeVolk and uh, Mark Yeager. And you, you know those people? I know those people, yeah. Okay. I know three of them. Mark Bloomberg, I think, was the other man with the glasses, yeah. Um, and again, look, if you extracted those people from this horrific, totalist cult framework, you'd probably find they're quite, you know, maybe they're nice people. Jenny, maybe not so much, but, uh, <laughs> but, but you know... But, you know, they're not, they, they, would, they would be relatively normal people. I just but, want to ask, Serge, because yeah. Serge, jij bent in Los Angeles. Dat was op de luchthaven ja. van Los Angeles. Jij bent, jij bent daar ooit naar Scientology geweest. Ja, uh, ik vertel ben, je daarnet. Ik ben ook eens een paar keer in Londen geweest. Maar in, in Los Angeles, ik was daar in de jaren negentig heel vaak en ik kende daar een hoop mensen. En ik ben één keer meegenomen uh, naar een interview door een ster zijn aan entourage. Uh, niet Tom Cruise, voor iemand dat denkt. Iemand anders. Ik wil niet zeggen wie, wie het is. Het heeft geen belang. Maar ik had toen een, mijn toenmalig lief, was een Amerikaanse die daar ook werkte en zo. En ik wou dat uh, hotel zien, want het was in een hotel, uh, Chateau Elysée. Niet te verwarren met Chateau Marmont trouwens, mm. wat nog altijd een heel chic beroemd hotel is. Chateau Elysée was vroeger een privéhotel enkel voor filmsterren. Humphrey Bogart had daar een suite. Uh, Greta Garbo, Cary Grant... Uh, Hmm. Noem maar op. Wat, wat was en jouw ik, indruk? En ik, ik, wou, ik wou dat zien daarom. Dus ik had gevraagd, neem mij eens mee. Maar dat was toen gekocht door Scientology. Een prachtig gigant, kasteel bijna. Uh, want ze hebben geld genoeg. Dus ze kopen altijd prachtige, gigantische gebouwen. En de sfeer daarvan herinner ik mij als een soort... Um, iedereen was heel vriendelijk, heel behulpzaam. Um, heel gastvrij, zoals ik daar straks zei. Uh, en, maar maar met, met een soort plastieke, robotachtige um, vriendelijkheid die, die echt dat gevoelde aan uw water, hier klopt iets niet. En het was ook een fuik, I know the word now, pod, uh, a fish pod, een fuik, een beetje zoals de getuigen van Jehovah. Alles wat je ook zei of deed, was erop gericht. Ze waren zo getraind, wat je ook zei of deed, nee, het leidde trekken. allemaal ja. naar de uitkomst, ja. wordt lid. Dat is uh, en, wel iets wat uh, John zal herkennen. Ja. John, uh, en, nog, just, een, nog, nog één ja. ding daarover. Ron L. Hubbard, die toen de, nog leefde, denk ik. De ik de oprichter snap, van ik snap niet yes. wat, wat oh, no, ze no, daarin no. zagen. Want ik moet die mensen zoals Mussolini en Hitler en zo, ik begrijp nooit wat zien ze in zo iemand. Ik moet die mensen maar vijf seconden bij, bezig zien mm -hmm. om te weten, daar is iets mee, daar moet ik vooral niet mee meegaan. Can you explain the, the, it very... The, the best way to, to answer that is... 
um, if you look at um, an abusive marriage, right, and, you know, the wife might be getting beaten and undermined constantly, thrown against the wall, the kids slapped around by some brute of a man, and you say, what do, what do you see in this man? Mm -hmm. What do you see in him? But, you know, the, the psychological ties and chains that hold that woman to this abusive monster of a man, it's very similar now to a cult, any of the cults, Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses, you name it, right? The people They're that are all vulnerable. similar. You're in, you have a vulnerability. Mm -hmm. you have, okay. And funnily enough, you have a desire. Mm -hmm. Most people within who join Scientology have a desire to help other people. But that desire then is perverted within the cult. Again, like an abusive pleasure. Very well, interesting. Are we going to see how it's going to end yeah. in, in court after such a long, long time? Uh, Friday, we have a, a verdict normally. Uh, keep us posted, I would say. Fingers crossed. That Thanks for your story, uh, John. <laughs> We're going to do something completely else now. Okay.